precious daddy. I pray as we come to the final day of this program, all I'm asking you, no one that step into this program shall go back with sorrow. No one shall remain in that problem anymore. They shall go home with testimony. A person that have growth in your stomach, I command the growth to melt and vanish away. That person that is bleeding every month, bleeding terribly, I cancel that abnormal bleeding. And I decree that it shall not continue your life. The one that mash poison, I cause the poison. And I give you from now to three days, you'll never see any, any sign of that thing in your body anymore in Jesus' name. That cough and terrible cat, I cancel it. Receive freedom in Jesus' name. I command that waist pain be cancelled permanently. I cause that fibro be uprooted in Jesus' name. And I pray for you that marriage that is shaking. I cancel that um, um, manipulation from the kingdom of darkness. And I command their marriage be intact. Father, yeah. intervene in Jesus' name. Yeah. The strange woman, the evil spirit, the evil spirit wife, I command be uprooted in Jesus' name. Yeah. And I command that heart problem be healed. Yeah. That heaviness on the head be healed. That young child has been very sick for a long time, and you brought the person in this program, he shall not die. I return that arrow dead, but to send that in Jesus' name. And that abnormal growth that you are seeing in your body at the left side of your leg, I command it to vanish away. Far intervene in Jesus' name. Elephantiasis, I curse you. I say go. Epilepsy, I cancel you. I command be gone in Jesus' name. And that fear, I cancel that evil fear. Let me uprooted in Jesus' name. Precious daddy. All these businesses that are blocked by the enemy, I command them to be open. Father, bless their business, bless them financially in Jesus' name. I pray the delay in marriage be cancelled. That constant reality be cancelled. I lose and liberate your people tonight in Jesus' name. That loss of memory, I cancel it. Let your memory come back. That person sitting on your family, I command that person to get away from that family in Jesus' name. My daddy, Bless your people. All of you that are losing things in the dream, I command the hand that steals your property, the thing that belongs to you, to weed off your sake in Jesus' name. My daddy, I pray that you bring freedom and unspeakable joy in the life of everyone as I minister to them. And as we conclude this program today, let them return home with joy unspeakable joy i pray as i minister now release your angels everywhere to minister to everyone one by one in jesus name can i hear you say amen, amen. holy ghost take over in jesus powerful name we pray shall we get seated Remember I told you there is no more time. But there is something I want you to take note before I go through the message we have today. And what is it that I want you to take note of? Take note. Warning against unruly behaviors. Praise the Lord. Many brethren are bound who live their lives contrary to to the teaching, preaching, and instruction in this ministry. Which were the teachings, instruction, which are divinely inspired to help all 
or live a good Christian life and make heaven at last, many people are not keeping to it. Such people at times claim to know and yet behave in disorderly manner, which contradicts the claims. They cannot keep to the rules. They cannot agree with any laid down principle or doctrine of the church. And they do things in their own way. Are you like that? Don't do it anymore. It will hinder your growth, your miracle, your heaven at last. You must follow the principle, the teaching, the doctrine, the heavenly doctrine according to the scriptures. And those people behave contrary, contrary to the will, the will of God, contrary to the word of God. Remember, in the church or the kingdom, we are taught to do the will of God and to please him, not to please ourselves, not to please, please our flesh. Therefore, I want and I plead with all of you, run away from unruly behavior. Are you among them into it? It is contrary to the will of God. Are you hearing me? If you look at your Bible, in Philippians chapter 3, I read verse 2. Philippians chapter 3. Please look at your Bible. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of concision. Of the concision. Take note of that. Here we are different kinds of behavior that's still in the church. People that are evil workers who do not keep according to the rule or principle or teaching of the Bible. They do things contrary to the rule and they are called evil Workers in Titus chapter 1, verse 10. Titus chapter 1, verse 10. Whose mouth must be stopped? Who subvert whole houses, teaching the things which they ought not for feed the local self? Please look at verse 10. Please look at verse 10. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the second season. Take note, take it again. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers. Take note, they call them unruly, vain talkers, deceivers. Those who do not keep to the rule, to the teaching, to the doctrine, and if you are among them, you are warned to desist from the evil. And if you are among them that are being corrupted by these people, keep away from them. Let's run away from unruly behavior because it is contrary to the will of God. It does not bring the righteousness of God. It does not promote purity. If you look at First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 14, First Thessalonians, Chapter 5, I read verse 14. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are what? Unruly. Comfort the feeble minded, support the weak, be patient towards all men. Now the warning is to which people? The unruly, those people in the church that are not subject to the rule, are not subject to the leadership, they do things anyhow. I want you to take note, this is a young church. And many people that came in, many came with, from different backgrounds. And they want things to do the way it is being done in their family or from their former churches. And as a result, 
They do not follow the pattern and teaching of the church where God has brought them into. And some of them are always doing what they like and say, well, this is how, the way we are doing it in our church. This is not your church anymore. You are no longer in that church. You are now where God wants you to be. A better church that is preparing people for heaven. Therefore, you must be subject to all the directive and teaching and whoever is leading you, you must listen to the instruction and do it. Beware of unruly behavior. Take note of that. There's need for you to hear a piece of this message because as we are rounding up today, you need to understand that this message is very necessary, even though we have no time. Make sure we keep today's warning. And as you do, I'm assuring you, the Lord will be with you. You will never miss the road. You will learn according to the teaching and preaching and follow the vision and mandate to make heaven and end of this life in Jesus' name. Remember, the word of God matters a lot. And therefore, everything we do, we do it according to his word according to his way. So, whoever is placed over you, you must obey all the teachings, the instruction. Don't introduce the way you are doing it, the way you feel that is good. No, it's not the way you feel that is good, but the will of God must be done. In Hebrews chapter 10, Hebrews chapter 10, I read verse 7. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will. Oh God, whose will? We have come to church to do the will of God according to the word of God. We must not do our will. Don't forget in the church. The Bible says, seek it first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And every other thing shall be added unto you. If you want God to bless you, you must abide in his will. You must practice righteousness according to the scriptures. You must not do anything because you felt it is good or you felt that, well, you know, this is the way you are doing it in your family. We must do the will of God according to the scriptures. So, don't forget. I want to let you know that we ought to do his will to, to the, the will of God and to please him in his kingdom in the church. We must not do anyhow. We must do the will of God in the church of the living God. We must keep the standard I mean laid down the ancient landmark. Are you hearing me? For all to follow, we must not do what we like. Are you hearing me? There was something that looks so, if you look at it, it's like, how can this thing be applied? But because God is behind it, whatever God is behind, it works. And what is it? Jesus and his disciples were in marriage in Canaan of Galilee. And the wine was finished. And the disciple came to the, the, you know, to the mother, Mary, and said, uh, you know, when they came and said, you have no wine. And he said, whatever that he tells you, do what? Do it. Whatsoever that Jesus said, do what? Do it. Not what you think, not what you are saying, what Jesus said. And then, Jesus told them to feed the water pot with water, the wine pot with water. And they feel it, it's okay, give it to the people. And they served it, and people say, Why do you keep you kept the better wine till now? And now we have you know taken a lot you know enough you know, wine that does not appear to be good. Now you are giving us the better wine. What are they calling better wine? Answer me. Water that was transformed by the word of God. As long as God said it, it becomes the better wine. 
Whatever you are taught in the Bible is better than what you know. Whatever the scripture teaches you is better than the wisdom of your father, your mother. Is way better than the wisdom of the ancient. You must keep to the instruction and teaching of the word of God so that you will make heaven at last. Praise the Lord. So let's apply the word of God. The Bible says, Whatever that I'm written afar off, I mean, afar off, was written for our learning. But what I'm saying is that. What are written before? Those things are written for what? Please, let's read it, please. I can get the right explanation. So can, I just think because of time, trying to, you know, glance on this thing, and then we'll move on to our message for this evening. But let's read the Bible. In Second Timothy, so we can get it as it is. Chapter 3, Second Timothy, chapter 3, verse 15. I read... Chapter 3, verse 15. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make this wise unto salvation, through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto all good works. How many scriptures? All scriptures. So let's endeavor to keep to all the scriptures, obey the totality. Because it is for our own good. Praise the Lord. So, whatever God, the word of God teaches, we must obey whether it pleases us or not. Whatever is the will of God, we must do it. Jesus said, thy will be word done. It was not sweet to him, but it's the will of God and it must prevail. So, whatsoever that is not subject to so whosoever that is not subject to teachings or leading in the church we should not keep company with such a person anybody that is not subject to the teachings instruction in the church from the pastor from the leader from the bible we must not keep company with that person because if you do that person will lead you astray. Are you hearing me? Any man, any woman, no matter the position in the church, and then he doesn't keep to what is being taught by the pastor, he's trying to introduce what he think he knows. We must not listen to that person at all, at all. Praise the Lord. Remember, Romans chapter 16 verse 17 says, Romans chapter 16. I read verse 17. And it reads 16 and 17. Now, I beseech thee, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned. And do what? Those people that teach something contrary, introduce something contrary to what they have learned, mark them and do what? Avoid them. Don't keep them, make them company. They will destroy you. Keep to the totality of the teaching. Look at Romans chapter 15, verse chapter 15, verse 3. For even Christ please not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. Verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were, were written for our learning, that 
we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Whatever written aforetime is written for our world, learning. And so we must not allow anybody who come to teach us or to lure us from the, the principle, the teaching, the doctrine of the Bible. What the Lord wants us to know through the leaders, we must keep to that. Anybody that is pointing you otherwise, mark that person and do what? Avoid such person. So, I'm going to just briefly read this outline because we don't have time. I need to release you. So, I'm going to go to the next message. But then, before I go to the next message, let me show you the reason and warning our expected response and danger, danger, and danger of neglecting this warning. So, let's go to point one. The reason and warning. I'm going to just, you know, go through the outline. Make some brief statements. Many people are bound that are safe with. They are not subject to the word of God. They are not subject to the teachings of the Bible. They are not subject to the leader in the church, the pastor in charge. And whatever they like or think, that's what they go on to do. Whatever they think is good, they go on to do it. They do not know that anything contrary to the will of God, no matter how good it is, is counterfeit. So, they do what they think that is good. They do not know that what is good to you is not what is good to God or the will of God. If you look at Titus chapter 1 verse 6, Titus chapter 1, I read verse 6. It says, chapter 1 verse 6, if any be blameless, the husband of one wife having faithful children, not accused of riot or unworld, unruly. So, anybody who must be blameless must be free from unruly. That person must be subject. It must be somebody that obey the totality of what is being instructed by the pastor or by the leaders. So, nobody is above the word of God. Anybody. Nobody is above God. Anybody. So all of us are subject to God and his word in every area. We are subject to our pastor and pastors that are placed over us and to all who teaches us the word of God. We must not joke with what they are teaching us by solid those things. We must keep to what is being taught us by our pastors. We must obey them in everything. According to the book of Joshua chapter 1 verse 16 to 18. Anybody that is not subject to that, that person, we must not keep company with that person. We must reject everything the person offers to you. In Joshua chapter 1 16. I read, and they answered Joshua, saying, All oh, that thou commandest us, we will do. And whatsoever thou send, whithersoever thou sendest us, we will go. According as we hearken unto Moses in all things, so we will hearken unto thee. Only the Lord thy God be with thee, as he was with Moses. Whosoever he be, that doth not re that doth rebel, doth rebel against thy commandment, and will not hearken unto thy words, in all that thou commandest him, he shall be put to death. Only be strong and of a good courage. Anybody that is not subject to the teachings, instructions, commandment of Joshua, the congregation said, we are going to put that person to death. Anybody that will rebel, you ask the person, Go here, 
He said, why? Come, he said, why? The congregation said, what? We will put the person to what? Sometimes you see, pastor will send the pastor to you in your location. And the, the day the pastor said, come back, he will find some people around who will be saying, no, you will not go. Who is your pastor? Don't you know we love you more than your pastor? That is what? Unruly behavior. And that is working against God. And he brings punishment and judgment. I don't know where I'm making. That pastor sent your pastor, your, your, your general overseer sent somebody to come and pastor you, or state pastor, or sent somebody to come and pastor you. And then said, I'm going to transfer, come back, come back, maybe two weeks or three months, or maybe one year. And the people that are around there say, ah, he's taking our man of God away. And he, you know, he just jealous of you. He's not happy with you. He's taking you away. And all of you are saying, no, if you anywhere you go, we'll follow you. In fact, we don't like what your general person is doing. Who are you? What do you think you know? What do you think you have? Why are you going to go against the word of the pastor that sent the person and they were drawing the person? Don't you know that whatever I say, wherever I send the person, that person will go. Are you hearing me? If anybody does not do that, it becomes a rebellion, disobedient, and that person will be subject to God's punishment. And if you join the person, God will also judge you. So, if a directive is given, don't go against it. Don't say because I love that man, I love that woman, and because that person is, you know, is the, is the power of God. No, nothing like that. Praise the Lord. The power of God in the Lord chosen, it flows from your G.O. to all of you. Am I right? Yes. If it flows from G.O., whatever your G.O. tells you to do, go on and do what? Do it. If your G.O. send the message and say, I need your pastor tomorrow, all of you will say what? Go well, go well, go well. I start to tell you, I have something to do for you here that I've not finished. Tell the person to do what? I didn't hear you very well. Don't, don't, don't do it again, you know. But if you do it, it becomes sin. It will be a poison to the church. Go, do what? I'm not hearing you. Go well. And if your pastor has sent anybody to you, don't say, ah, our well, former pastor is better than the first one. Don't say that. Your pastor has sent him with authority. Whether he knows how to speak or not, he has come with power. Are you hearing me? When he said it, you know, whether he put two words or two, two, three together, anything he said to you, God will confirm it. Praise the Lord. So, be careful of unruly behavior. It will not pay you. Remember, Jesus said, you know, put water in that uh, water pot and then distribute it. And because the world was spoken with authority, the water became what? The best wine. You are here in this church. You only, maybe sometimes some of you believe that your pastor only for miracle, for healing, for deliverance. When your pastor gives instruction, I say, no, we don't believe. Don't you know that the power that follows and produces the miracle is the same power that follows the whole instruction? Praise the Lord. So take note. And whoever that is not obedient to this instruction, we must mark such pe person or group of people and do what? Avoid them. That's what we read in Romans 16, 17. We should rebuke them to desist from such evil character of unruly behavior and amend their ways because God is not pleased with it. That's what we saw in first. Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 14. When any person is not following in the church, such a person can do anything. If you see a brother or sister that is not following the instruction, that is always kick against the pastor's instruction, he can do anything. You don't hear me. Don't say, eh, we have one big man in our church. He's bigger than the pastor. He's bigger than the teaching. There is nobody like that. Are you hearing me? That big man will be subject to the teaching instruction of your pastor. 
If he does not, you will not take any gift from him. Did you hear what I said? You will not take any advice or instruction from him or her. I don't say this madam is from a high place person in the society, in government. Therefore, is above at the word of God. The pastor, don't say that. Everybody is subject to what? The word of God. Don't say, eh, pastor, you don't know that this is the man that is helping us to build our church, helping us to, you know, to get money here, helping us, and you want this man to leave the church? No, leave him whatever he say. We will obey him rather than you. Don't say that. There is nothing like that. Do you hear me? Like if you tell him to take his money and take his Bible, look for somewhere else. If you cannot obey a pastor and go to heaven, he cannot be instrument of corrupting the church. Do you hear me? So, big man, he doesn't come to a workers meeting. Big man, he doesn't come to a conference like this. Big man, he is not ready to come to church on time. Big man is not ready to do, you know, whatever he say in the church. He's just after himself and family. And you say he's a member of the church. No, he's a counterfeit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And when he comes with instruction in order to, you know, to make all of us to recognize him. Say, eh, this thing should be done. Tell the person, go and sit down. You are not qualified to tell us what to do here. Because you are not keeping to the rule. I don't know whether I've heard the point I'm making. Tell the big man to do or sit down listening. You are not qualified to instruct us on what to do in the church. You know, you know what, what those people do? Whenever they come to the church, immediately they want to make themselves to be known. They say, hey, hey, what is it? Hey, you know, carry this chair here, do this one here. Say, go and sit down. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And he said, so we want to build this church now. We are going to build this church. Um, in fact, I, I, I want to put that one million naira. Tell him, we don't need that money now. Sit down. Are you hearing me? He want to make people to do what? To, to recognize him. So he can continue to carry out the evil and destroy the church. My friend, we have passed that age. Can I hear you say amen? Yeah. What did I say? So now, big man should sit down and listen to big madam, big title holder, big government man should sit down and listen to the word of God. What we have is bigger than man. Are you hearing me? So don't let anybody come to destroy the church anywhere. That does not mean that we are not have, going to have respect or regard to him, but if he come to destroy, they tell us what to do. We say, no, we are learning what to do through the Bible. Not what you are telling us. Praise the Lord. So, I want you to take note of this. Such person can do anything. Anybody that is not subject, that is unruly, that is not following the, the, the instruction and teachings, that is not subject, that person can do what? In fact, such person, if you give the person a chance, he can slap somebody in the church. Don't you know who I am? Before you know it, you give the person why. And all of you that are born again, your heart will fail. I don't know where I heard from. He said, don't you know who I am? You don't know that I'm respected in this church. And you come to talk to me like this. Hey, boy. And everybody that is born again will begin to cry. Praise the Lord. Say, so what am I seeing? Yes, you are seeing it because you people are giving him a big post. Because he's a big man. That's why he gave somebody what? So, praise the Lord. Everybody must be subject to the teaching. In fact, they can fight. They can complain. They can murmur. Are you hearing me? Such a person can, can destroy the church with sin. Can do anything. Can bring a lot of evil to the church. We must not allow it. We have passed that stage. The Bible said in First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. What did the Bible say? First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. I read First Corinthians 15 and verse 33. And it says, Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupt good manners. 
all those people that are discussing and you know, you know borrowing the lifestyle of that person it will corrupt them to do anyhow in the church we must not allow it at all at all such a person will not agree with our time if we are closing as we are here now if such people is in this kind of church and he said look at the time look at the time look at the time hear me hear me people around me look at the time and he said oh, he's a big man let him talk I hope you hear what I'm saying. Tell him that this is, this is not your, your, your business place. Close your mouth. This is the house of God. Are you hearing me? Close your mouth and listen to what is being taught. If two persons have told you something, like you will not talk again. Two of us. If you want to say, ah, look at that, look at that. And somebody says, my friend, close your mouth. This is the house of God. This is not a business place. Another person says, please, please, close your mouth. It will, not, it will be quiet. But if you find somebody say, oh, you see, that's what I see here. He say, hey, I, I'm going. I'm going I'm not, I'm not, I, before you know, you're not supposed to get up. Before you know, you're a billion. People will begin to complain. People say, time, 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 time. Our pastor used to be time. All right, people cannot believe it. We say, yes, it is time. Every time, 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 time. Before you know it, time, they will tie themselves out of the program of God. And when you give such of that courage, they will not come to church again. They will feel too big. They will say, workers meeting. They say, workers meeting is for poor people. Eh? He said that Tuesday service or Sunday, every time, church, church, church. Because you are not doing anything. That's why I talk about church. Before you know, you begin to destroy, 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 destroy. We must not give them what? Chance. Are you hearing me? Let them come if they want to go to heaven, listening to what is being taught. Anybody can do this thing, big man or those who are not big men. There are some people that are very stubborn. They feel that, well, people need to know them. They can behave like this. And they want to say everything that complain. They say, we're too old. We're Christian from so so a holiness uh, church from many years. They're Christian. Therefore, they can they know, let's do this how we used to do in our church. Tell the person that that your church, that time I passed. Why you God brought you here? You need to listen to what is being taught. Because past like that, that's what they do. Old prophets. They just want to mislead you. Praise the Lord. So, such people will not agree to attend, they will not like to attend meetings, crusades, nor any laid down rule or standard. They will not, they will ignore it. They will ask, who, who said it? We must avoid such people, no matter what that person wants to offer. It's such people that when they are in their pride, eh? Such people, if you meet them in your location, when they're in their pride, they say, Go and tell them, Walker. They will say, Go and tell them, Walker. So, if you see anybody that says, Go and tell them, Walker, and your pastor did not discipline that person, eh? please report the person to me. I will discipline the person. Go and tell them, Walker. Walker becomes now his a, a housemaid or equal because he has money. No, it's not true. In the house of God, the hierarchy and God has placed us above you. You must respect us. So you don't need to say, go and tell the mocker. If I hear it, what I will say is I will ask the pastor there to stop you from whatever you are doing. Because we need to have your regard for because we are laboring for you. We labor for you day and what? Night. So if you insult us, we will discipline you because you know that you are going to poison the church. So such people, wherever you find, they will say, go and tell the mugger. Is he not Lazarus? I know him. That's what he can do. Ah, he preaches holiness. He's too gentle. He's too humble. If I speak now, if I just give my excuse, he will excuse me. We are past that stage. People must go to heaven from choosing. And if we must go to help from choosing, there must be discipline. There must be subject to authority and rules. Praise the Lord. So beware of unruly behavior. Don't keep company with such people. You have to mark them and do what? In First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 14. 
chapter 5 verse 14 we exhort now we exhort you brethren warn them that are what are unruly do what do you do to them warn them don't don't make be partner to them don't agree with their evil warn them to stop that kind of evil lifestyle in Romans chapter 16, 17. 16, 17. And I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and do all. Avoid them. Let me tell you, brethren, there's something you need to understand. These people that are not really spiritual, if you give them chance, if you pamper them, they will not be saved. You have to make them to know. If, if you pamper them, they will stop coming to church. So make them to know what they should know with a serious, with all seriousness. Somebody is coming to church, is not subject to all the teachings, instructions, and it just does what they like. And you are keeping company with him. Before you know it, he will stop church and he will, he will make it up a slide. Praise the Lord. Please, because of our time, let me go to the second point that we don't have time. Expected response and danger of neglect. Danger, danger of neglect. Remember, many of these people are on the increase in these last days or end time. This end time. There are so many in the church. People that does what? Anyhow, are so many. They do what they like. They on the increase. The end time produces them because in this end time, so many people are no longer, they want to do what they like. They are selfish, they are proud, they are boasters, they are inventors of evil things. So, uh, this end time, so many of them are there trying to tell you what to do. Those who do anyhow who are not following those who are stubborn in nature, disobedient to teachings, proud and self way There are many. Do you hear what I said? I said there are what? Titus chapter 1 verse 10. Chapter 1 verse 10. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers. How many? Many. So the Bible says there are many. Even though that they come to crusade like this, sometimes they keep quiet. When you go to branches, in fact, many of them don't even come to crusade. When you get to the end, they are the landlord, whatever they are, they are now or gas, they are in charge now. As we're all here now, eh? Many of them are there giving order. They are what? There are many, many. We should take note of such people or mark them and avoid them and have nothing to do with them. Put them the place where they are. Don't exalt them. They will destroy the church. Are you hearing me? Do that that they may be ashamed and repent. If you mark them, avoid them, they will be ashamed and they will do what? They will repent. But if you continue to exalt them and position them, they will get into the position of destroying the church. We should not allow them to corrupt us. Rather, we should rebuke them seriously. Are you hearing me? What do you do with them? Rebuke them. That's what the Bible teaches us. If you look at First um, Thessalonians chapter five verse fourteen, talking about warning them. Titus chapter one verse um, thirteen, chapter one verse thirteen to sixteen. Let's see. Titus chapter one verse thirteen. This witness is true. Wherefore rebuke them what sharply. That they may be sound in their faith. Look at verse 
chapter 15. Unto the pure, all things are world pure. But unto them that are defied and unbelieving, nothing is pure. But even their mind and conscience is world defied. They profess that they know God, but in their words they deny him, being abominable and disobedient. And unto every good work reprobate. Many of these people, they, have, they don't see anything good. Are you hearing me? So, we should rebuke them. We should not allow such people to dominate our, our church, our branches. I want to take note. We must not give them what? Chance. At all, at all. I say we should not allow them to do what? To dominate what? Our church in our local church, in our lo local church branches. If we do, do you know what they will do? If you allow something to dominate the branch where you are, they will overthrow the truth. They will do what? The truth will be gone. They will lead you by lies. They will paint the past up black and blue. People will believe it because they have money, because they're they are, you know, they are rich people. Don't allow them. Because the pastor did not, you know, will not tolerate the evil want to keep to the truth. They will paint the pastor black and blue. In fact, take note. Such people will overthrow holiness in the church because they want to do anyhow. Such people, they will destroy the standards. Remember, evil communication corrupt good manners. Such people are used by devils terribly to destroy the church. So, sometimes they marry two wives. They're asking you a question. Is it right that somebody, uh, can't somebody have two wives? They mean to kick on everything. They'll tell you what is wrong about it. They begin to kick. What's wrong about this? What's wrong about that? Before you know it, the people that hold it to the truth will begin to drop it. Praise the Lord. So, we must not allow them to destroy our church because they will use them a lot to destroy the church. So, as believers, we must not give them chance. But by prayers, we, we should resist, resist them and rebuke them out of our way. Because in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27, it said, Neither give place to who? The devil. Because it comes to keep to steal and to destroy. According to John chapter 10, verse 10b, they will take over such people. Once they have, have their way, confusion will set in in the church, more mourning, and any hard behavior will come in. Any hard behavior will set into the church, and holiness will depart. And when holiness goes away, the Holy Spirit follows. So we must be prayerful and endeavor to overcome this uh, type of a people with unruly behavior. Praise the Lord. We must overcome them prayerfully. That's why we need to pray in season and out of season. Such people can encourage but slide us a lot. Encourage people that are, that are no longer agreeing with the church. Always, you know, trying to be, show them that, you know, the pastor doesn't do it well. So, uh, you should have done it like this. They make people to leave the church. So, we must receive them through prayers. Bow down here and say, Lord, keep me away from unruly behavior. Everybody pray. As you return to your various places, be subject to the rule, to the instruction, to the teaching, to the directive coming from the church. Be subject to it. Everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's do that. I'm praying for you. A Father in heaven, I present the whole church to you. I pray as we return to our various places that we might continue to rejoice in you. 
Give us grace to be subject to the rule, to the pastor, to the standard, to the doctrine, to the teachings, so that that shall continue to be flow of grace. We shall return, I will continue to receive from you, and be joyful until we make heaven at last in Jesus' name. I plead the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' powerful name we pray.